This is the third video in the series that we're producing critiquing Andrew Kleeman's economic theories. What is at stake in this? Our position is that a, a socialist labour movement has to develop its own political economy that rests on robust assumptions and has empirically testable content and is operationally and practically useful. The starting point for this is capitals, the capital volumes one to three, where the labour theory of value is a central component. And one might add Marx's short book, Value, Price and Profit. Now, the problem arises from a hypothesised profit equalisation process. Smith Ricardo believed that there was a tendency of profit to equalise across branches of production, and Marx took that from them in certain places. And the belief was that capital flows from sectors with low profit rates to high profit rates, and this will equalise the rate of profit. But on what time scale does it operate? Are there systematic obstacles to it occurring? We've shown in our previous video that if you transfer capital from sector one with high organic composition of capital to sector two with low organic composition of capital, the net effect is to bid up the price of labour power, which bids up the price of the output of department two, which is a price movement in the opposite direction from that required by the profit equalisation theory. And we know that the profit equalisation doesn't occur. You get a noisy distribution of profit rates. There is not a single rate uh, profit rate. There are persistent differentials, as Sheikh shows. Now, in a manuscript that was publish published posthumously by Engels as chapter 9 of volume 3 of Capital, Marx considered prices formed by simultaneously equalised profit rates. In 1997, the Marxist economist Anwar Sheikh analysed the trajectory of such prices in general. He was able to show that this trajectory is determined by Serafian equilibrium prices. Now, Sraffa was the editor of the collected works of Ricardo, who produced the collected works of Ricardo in the mid-20th century, and as a result of his studies, came up with a theory of prices which was extremely influential, published in 1960, as production of commodities by means of commodities. And he claimed to have solved Ricardo's problem and have a consistent theory of prices arising from that. The problem with the Serafian profit equalising prices, however, was that they rendered the labour theory of value redundant, and they yielded alternative contradictory predictions from those given by the labour theory of value. So what is at stake here is the centrality of labour in political economy. <coughs> We have shown in our previous videos that Kleeman is essentially a Serafian. His prices, the prices he predicts, are the same as those of Serafian. We do this by using open source MATLAB program, which we have provided, which uses Kleeman's own equations and you simulate them over time and you see they yield the same result as the Serafian prices. Um, if you get a sudden increase in productivity in the steel industry, you get, for one period, you get a fall in the rate of profit in Serafian, uh, in Kleeman's case. But it quickly moves back onto the Serafian trajectory. Kleeman draws quite unjustified general conclusions for this, from this blip here. This blip doesn't occur if you have continuous change 
in the rate of productivity. If you take the same equations and simulate the profit rate and the continuous improvement of the steel sector, productivity in the steel sector, the rate of profit follows a trajectory which is exactly asymptotically defined by the Serafian rate of profit. So Kleeman is not actually inventing any new price theory. He's just dressing Serafa up in different garb. He's predict predicting exactly the same prices as Serafa, but mystifying it. Now, it's not surprising he gets the same prices. What's he doing? He's just applying the well-known Jacobi method for solving simultaneous equations rather than the Gauss-Seidel method. And it's well established that those give the same answers. Now, later on, faced with the evidence that there isn't a single rate of profit, Kleeman started adding epicycles to his theory. He says he could have a different rate of profit in each industry. But at this point, he's gone full Ptolemy. As those who saw my earlier video on epicycles in economics will understand. What are epicycles? They're what are otherwise known as fudge factors. Complications added to a theory to force it to fit observations. I said in my earlier video that epicycles were a primitive form of Fourier decomposition and using them you can fudge a theory to fit any observations. In that previous video I was critiquing Samuelson and showing that his theory was even worse than epicycle theory. Samuelson of course um, used Sraffa's results to attack the labour theory of value. And of course Kleeman, and it follows that Kleeman's predictions about price, since they're the same as Sraffa's, are subject to Samuelson's own critique. But why is Kleeman just adding epicycles? Well, here's his basic Kleeman McGlone equation for prices. Same paper, he gives a more general version of general temporal prices with this term GT and he sets in his first case GT to be such that when you substitute it in you get the same result as that okay <coughs> this thing is still a determinate set of equations it yields a definite trajectory and that trajectory is the same as Sraffa's, as we've shown. If he drops profit equalization, the general prices are, become indeterminate because G then becomes an additive term with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, which now allow you to fit any data you like. You're completely free to choose what G is going to be. Where is he going to get G from? Is it from a more general law relating profit rate to capital composition? Well, if so, he doesn't give it. Is it just from observations? For example, observe the profit rate in baking is 17%, that in car production, 24%, and write those down. Adjust G to fit these observations. Well, if you do that, you can get exact fit on all prices, but that's what you can do with epicycles of Fourier decomposition. It's not scientific political economy, it's just mere accountancy. Accountancy gives you an exact account of the prices, but it's not political economy. The problem is you need as many profit rates as there are prices to explain. You have no general law here. You're just writing down national accounts. Now, you can skip the Serafian rabbit hole. That's been possible since Farjun and Makova published their book, Laws of Chaos, in the early 1980s. 
they show that you get a stable distribution of profit rates. And once you reformulate your maths in terms of a stable distribution of profit rates, it ends up that the labour theory of value as set out in volume one of Capital turns out to be correct. And myself, Alan and David have published several papers based on Fajun and Makova's maths which show how well the predictions of stochastic Marxism fit the real data. It provides you with a far more robust basis for political economy than the attempt to use made-up deterministic equations of the type that Kleeman produces. In the next video we will go into the empirical evidence and why Kleeman's challenges to the labour theory of value as an empirical law are void.